This is a computer that analyzes thoroughbred horse racing. It's on sale here at the Sharper Image Store. You input information about an individual horse's history and performance, and it predicts which horse will win the race. Now, computers are being used for more than just gambling, that is, figuring out who will win. Athletes are using computers to figure out how to win, from individual sports like running and gymnastics to big-time pro sports like baseball and football. Today, we'll take a look at the growing role of computers in sports on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Central Point Software, suppliers of utility software, including disk backup, data recovery, file and desktop management, and virus protection. Central Point Software, making computing safer, simpler, faster. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me this week is Heidi Roizen, president of T-Maker. Heidi, I'm playing this Jack Nicklaus Unlimited Golf Game. It's the newest generation of these golf simulation games. And while it's a game, the accolade people who put out the game actually have done some research. And they say if you practice playing a computer game, you really do play better when you get out on the real course, believe it or not. Seems amazing to me. Now, Heidi, I know you're interested in sports because your company, T-Maker, comes out with click art for sports and games. What is that? Right. This is a collection of images that we've put together for the uh, desktop publisher uh -huh. to use in athletic-related publications, either on the Mac or on mm -hmm. the PC. Now, Heidi, we're talking about computers and sports, and I know sports may not be the most serious application that computers are, are, are used in, but in terms of the software technology, the software design that goes into this kind of stuff, is it applicable to other more serious areas? No, I think absolutely. I think you can see a lot of similarities between what you find designed in sports-related software and general business applications across mm -hmm. the board. I mean, to look at the screen, it doesn't take much to imagine that one could turn the basic software into a flight training simulation right. or medical uh -huh, simulation. Uh -huh. Also, sports is very data intensive, as best as I can tell. <laughs> and so, you know, the statistics that you keep on baseball are very si similar to what you do in your business. Sure. Well, Heidi, today we'll see several ways in which computers are being used in the sports world, from baseball and football to track, gymnastics, and scuba diving. Now, when it comes to world-class sailing, the winner is often determined not only by the skill of the ship's crew, but by the skill of the ship's designer. And these days, the designer's main tool is a computer. Here's a report. Sailors racing in the America's Cup yacht race are at the mercy of fickle winds, unpredictable ocean currents, and tenacious opponents. To overcome all of this, the yachtsmen have come to rely on computers to do everything from design their boats to simulate races even before the actual boat ever touches the water. That makes this premier world-class racing event more than just a battle of sailing skill. It is entirely dependent upon technology. I mean, people use computers to design their boats. They use computers to sail their boats. Uh, there are onboard computers to, to help with navigation, speed, direction. Uh, they use computers to manage their syndicates. They use computers sometimes to even track the competitive performance of other skippers. So the use of information technology in the America's Cup uh, is pervasive. The American boat, Stars and Stripes, was designed on an HP 9000 using a software program called Fast Yacht. The design was then fine-tuned by simulating races on another computer, which generated wind and sea conditions based on actual weather data. The New Zealand boat was also a high-tech marvel. HP computers were used to monitor the shape and twist of the sails to squeeze out the optimum performance. And another HP computer was used just to keep tabs on the American boat's position. The 1992 America's Cup race will also feature state-of-the-art computers. But even the people at HP say it is the application of the technology, not the technology itself, which will determine the winner. What it comes down to, really, uh, is the skill of the designers and the skill of the sailors. I mean, the computers are not taking over. But what they're doing is the proper use of information technology are allowing both the designers and the sailors to optimize their performance and maximize their competitive advantage. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
Well, most of us will never get to crew an America's Cup yacht, but we probably will watch a baseball game or want to improve our tennis or golf game. Here to show us how computers can help are Tim Ramoshowski of Stats Inc. and Steven Reisenhoover of Peak Performance Technologies. Heidi? Steve, we know that uh, coaches today are using things, instant replay, slow-mo, all sorts of video technology to monitor the performance of their athletes to be able to coach them better. What is the advantage of using a computer to do that? Once the computer has acquired the data from the performance, it can play it back over and over from different angles. Coach may want to look at the performance from above or from another side. And also, it gives numbers to the performance. How fast was the ball going when the pitcher released it? What was the impact speed of the club? Now, how does that data get into the computer? The software uses video. It uses a frame grabber, which imports the image in order to get the data, and a controller board, which moves the tape in the VCR to allow the user so to So you literally that. start with video mm -hmm. and then process it inside your program. All right, we're going to get back to your stuff in a minute. I want to turn to you, Tim. Another way of analyzing an athlete's performance is not only by watching it, but by dealing with the stats, and I guess that's your approach. Uh, and tell us, tell us, you deal with baseball here, and show us an example of how you get this data into your system uh, for a professional baseball team. Okay, I'll show you here uh, a system we use up in the press box as we're going along in the game. And uh, the program is called Playball. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be doing the second half of an inning of uh, June 18th of last year with uh, the Padres and the Giants. And the second half of the uh, first inning, uh, Brett Butler is up. Now we score every pitch and every lineup change and everything that happens in sequence mm -hmm. so that we know it can exactly recreate the game. For example, uh, Brett Butler looked at two uh, called strikes. So that's T for take a strike? Take a strike. Uh -huh. uh, hit an F for a foul ball. Took two balls. Two more uh, foul balls. And then put the ball in play. He made a single. The ball was a liner. And we also keep the distance, direction, and velocity of every batted ball that's not a foul ball into the stands uh -huh. or out of play. You use a system for that? Yes, we have, a, uh, we have a code here that breaks the field up into 26 wow. different areas. So you identify out from exactly point. which section of the field the ball went into when he hit it? Yes, and, and uh, where it landed. Right and how many feet away from or, home or plate. Take us, take us back to how you would continue to enter the game then. Okay, this uh, was up the center, M160, and it was hard hit. So that means it was up the center, landed 160 feet away from home plate, and it was hard hit, line drive. The next batter up is uh, Rick Leach, and uh, we also score pickoffs. There was a pickoff attempt against Butler, and uh, Leach swung and missed. However, Butler was running on the pitch and stole the base, second base, and here Butler moved to second. Leach is still up, and uh, Butler, uh, or Leach hit the ball. It was a double, and Butler scored, and the batted ball also was a liner at uh, down the left field line. Let's see, 240. Mm. And All right, now you actually do this in real time. I mean, this is a real game in which this data was really entered for this, for this Giants-Padres game. That's true. I was up in the press box behind the official scorer, and... Uh, okay, Tim, I want you to now, now uh, finish doing that and call up the, the service where, in which we're going to look at all these stats while we turn back and talk to Steve oh. for a minute, if I can. Okay. Uh, Steve, now let's go back to what you were uh, telling Heidi. What, what does your program do? Well, it allows the user to input data from videotape, and then it can display it for you so that a coach can watch it in slow motion, uh, picture at a time, look at it from different angles. All right, you've angles. got a golf example, mm -hmm. I believe. Show us that one. This is a golfer. You're looking at them from the side. It was used three video cameras to acquire this data. The software is going to animate the swing for me, but the user can run it through, single step it, picture by picture, and the coach can look at exactly what they want to. And again, that's based on real video. This is not just a created stick figure. Yes. And here's multiple figures so that you can get an idea of what path through space different parts of the body took. Mm -hmm. Is there any significance to the fact that each body part has a different color to it? Uh, just so you can see it better, can identify it more easily. Once the software has the three-dimensional coordinates, it can rotate our field of view so that we can look at this golf swing from different perspectives. For example, now we can look at the person swing the club from above. Mm-hmm. 
And again, you, you obviously didn't have a camera up there, but you're able to rotate that inside the computer. It's sort of the, one of the points you were making Correct. Once earlier. the computer has the three-dimensional coordinates of all the points Can on the body. Can you see multiple views, do you? Mm-hmm. This will bring up three views, one from the side, one from the front, and one from the top. And it's going to put what we call a trajectory on the club head so that the coach can follow a part of the body, or in this case, the heel of the club through mm -hmm. space, watching the path that it makes. So it's, it's figuring this all out right now. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. Huh. So that's all three angles in sync. Mm -hmm. So you can see what the club is. Or you can yeah, run each one through separately. You also said something about being able to show data at the same time that you're showing the movement. Mm -hmm. What it's loading now will be, you'll see the stick figure above and force information from each leg below. What the coach will look at here is weight transfer between the legs as the ball is hit. This okay, is, so we'll see both the graphic display mm -hmm. and, and an actual data. You'll, okay, here you'll see is. data below and the stick figure above. So this is a shif shift of weight from one foot to the other mm -hmm. during and, the club swing. And again, all this data is being uh, analyzed or figured out by the videos as, as put through the computer. Yes, the force data here was recorded with a force platform. I see. Steve, we only have a little bit of time left. I know you've got a, a, an ice skater demo too. Could you jump to that for us? Now this is an Olympic figure skater doing a double axle. What the coach will look for here is how close together are the skater's legs? Uh, how high mm -hmm. off the ice do they get? And again, based on real video. Based on real yeah. video. And the last is uh, the coach can look at, compare two people. What they'll want to look at here is how high above the ice does the person get mm -hmm. to decide how good the jump is and how so well they're So this is two different it. skaters compared. Mm -hmm. And the li yellow line is tracking the height above the ice. Yeah, the center of mass of the body. All right, that's great. All right, Tim, we have just about a minute left. Let's get back now. You're up inside the program now called ProLine, which lets you access that gigantic database, which was dependent on the information you gave it. What can we find out here? Say I wanted to find out stuff about a particular player, or oh. Wade Boggs or whatever. Let's try Wade Boggs. We'll check last season. Okay. And it gives you uh, all kinds of information, left-handed, right-handed uh, pitchers, with the runners on, splits by month. So this is how we're able to see those incredibly detailed statistics while we're watching a game on TV? That's true. US, ESPN accesses uh, this database, and I thought one thing that was interesting here is that when Wade Boggs hits the first pitch, he's batting 167 see, last yeah. season, and this is a lifetime 340 <laughs> hitter. He's not too good on the first pitch, but not he goes up to 305 after the first pitch, whether it's a ball or a strike, huh? That's right. That's interesting. How about, how about a pitcher, real quick? We're almost out of time here. Sid Fernandez, what can we find out about his pitching style? Well, there are a few Fernandezes in baseball. Okay, so we, so we pick Here's one of the three. Two. Sid Fernandez is a, uh, a slow throwing left handed pitcher. And uh, one thing you would expect to see is that uh, he would be better off against left handed batters than right handed uh -huh. batters. However, we see here that uh, left-handed batters hit 222 right, against right. him, and right-handed batters only hit 195. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an online system, and in fact, a professional baseball team and the coaches might access this to figure out what's going on with their own players. They do. Yeah. Is this uh, available to fans as well? This is available to fans. Uh, it uh, runs about 25 cents a minute uh, in the non-commercial times, and uh, they I, I, can look I don't, don't want to think. I don't think I want to know this is available to. <laughs> 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 All right. Well. Well, football may appear to be a game of brawn, but it is also a game of brains, and computers are playing an increasing role in helping coaches figure out how to get the most out of specific plays and players on a football team. Here's a report. For the San Francisco 49ers, each victory is the result of a well-planned strategy and rigorous training. But not all of the planning and training takes place on the football field or in the weight room. A lot of time is also spent in the screening room, where the coaches and players sit down to analyze and study plays from past games on videotape. And when you think of all the combination of plays, players, and games, it's no wonder they need computers to keep track of it all. The computer-based editing system used by the 49ers is called the Lexicon Sports Video Editor from Sports Tech. It lets the team catalog their entire season play-by-play. -play. They can basically see anything they want to on one given tape. If they want to see, uh, say, all the runs that uh, someone has 
let's say uh, they're watching the Rams again. Every run that they uh, run out of a certain formation and what hole they go through in the offensive line, where their blocking schemes are, how they uh, pass protect. You know, if manually, the game probably would be over by the time I, I got him that tape. The video editing system uses a PC to log and mark all the different plays on the game tapes. The plays are then assigned codes and edited onto separate blank tapes, depending on what the coaches want to see. The lexicon system can handle up to four game tapes at once and can create up to 16 customized reels containing specific types of plays. Not only is the system used by the 49ers to evaluate their own performance, but they also use it to study the other team's strategy. Given the mountain of data that comes out of each game, the computer system enables the coaches to get what they want in days rather than weeks. And with tons of money riding on each game, speed in computing has become as important as speed on the field. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel. Computers are not only used in professional team sports like football and baseball, but also in individual participative sports like running and scuba diving. Here to show us how are Danny Rossi of Wet Pleasure and Bruce Noth of Advanced Mechanical Technology, Inc. And Heidi, it looks like we're talking about scuba diving here. Absolutely. I think most non-divers think that the scariest thing about scuba diving is sharks. <laughs> but I think those of us who dive believe it's actually the buildup of nitrogen in the right. body that's due to the depth and the time you're under. And I know for myself, keeping track of it on dive tables is a complicated chore. Uh, it looks like you've got a computer solution to it right. here. Um, this computer, which are water activated, not only provides us um, the calculations for the nitrogen absorption that the body uh, suffers during our dive, but also keep track of not only how long we've been at different depths, but also for how long we stay for the total dive. One of the things that we can do with that PC is Nowadays, we can transfer the information from the actual device that we carry in the dive, in this case, this computer, and we can transfer all of that information directly into a PC without having to take the data out manually. So, so that instrument I'm sorry, was sorry. on the diver's wrist during the dive, recorded all the data, Correct. and you're about to transfer that Correct. into the PC. And then when I'm back at home, I just transfer that information onto the PC. And as you can see, mm -hmm. the uh, PC is reading the information directly from the computer without any actual manual intervention or having to work those numbers out yourself. And again, the data is time, depth, calculations of Correct. nitrogen. Okay. Correct. Once the data is in there, I can remove the device, of course, and I'll transfer it into a form that's humanly readable. In other words, it will convert the numbers into actual depth and times, mm -hmm. the information I took from the computer. Also, once that's done, I can actually perform the logbook function, which is sort of replacing the actual um, bookkeeping that we used to do with a written piece of paper and um, keeping track of our uh, dives in that format okay, just by so keeping that, it on the software. What would that look like now? So we transfer the information into the logbook and then I could just work into selecting and showing exactly what we did during our dives. What we see in the screen is on the upper left hand corner we see the device and the information that actually presented to the diver during the mm -hmm. dive. On the top right hand corner we see a simulation of the nitrogen absorption by the different body compartments. So that that's the nitrogen to absorption over time during this particular dive. Correct. Uh -huh. And on the bottom half of the screen we do see the actual dive profile that the diver mm -hmm. um, performed during the dive. In this case we're seeing every three minute increment at what depth the diver mm -hmm. was during its dive. And we can continue doing this for the whole of the series of yeah. dives that we have performed. Oh, yes. At right. any time we can extract that information. All right, Danny, over here you have a kind of portable computer hooked up to, to this. Tell us what this is. Right. This is a similar type of instrument. Uh, the top half of the instrument for, performs all the necessary calculations for the nitrogen absorption. The bottom half, because it's connected to the tank, can also perform calculations regarding as to how long the air is going to last at our present depth. Not only gives you the amount of pressure remaining, but a forecasting mm -hmm. number of minutes, which is information very useful to the sure, diver. Sure. All right, Bruce, I want to turn to you now. And you've got a kind of complex system we have with a, with a, a pep. Explain what this hardware configuration is. That, that's a um, force platform. It measures ground reaction forces and used, is used in things like sports analysis. Um, what kinds of sports? Say running and also almost any kind of sport like 
baseball, on weightlifting, uh -huh. uh, shot put, whatever. Okay. As well as gait analysis in hospitals and stability analysis. All right, so, so I think I'm going to be your dummy here. Tell sure, us what could to you, do. Do you mind um, actually standing on the platform? Okay. I'll just give a, let me give a quick explanation of what it does. Mm -hmm. The blue line on the screen is the force vector. The length of that line represents your weight. We don't tell you what that is, but we actually okay. know what it is. And also now if you sway from side to side, you can see the top purple bar goes back and forth. That's mm -hmm. a force in the horizontal direction. Uh huh. And we can measure, for instance, the torque about the vertical axis if you'll do the twist. Okay. Yeah, perfect. You're the best. <laughs> All right. So that's um, the bottom purple bar, do it one more time, goes positive and negative, and that's the torque about the vertical axis. Mm -hmm. So we measure three force components and three torque components, okay. and that tells us a lot about how one walks. Now what we'll do is do a, um, if you'll step off, okay. let's, let's um, do a, um, a quick gait measurement okay. here. So now just walk across the okay. platform normally. And we can see a quick view here that tells us the data is good. And now, let me um, analyze the data. Drawing the plots. The top, the top um, left plot shows the forces versus time. And the purple bar, the one on top, shows the vertical force over time. And that has a characteristic two peaks. The center of pressure is the top right. And then we can see different force vectors in the mm -hmm, two bottom mm -hmm. plots. And one, um, one thing that's interesting is we can look at a um, a child with cerebral palsy, for instance, and compare that with, um, with how, you, how you walked. And now we'll see that the top purple bar on the left has three peaks, yeah. which is a characteristic as opposed yeah, to yours, yeah, which was two yeah. and is normal. So now why don't we do a little um, stability work. OK. Stand now, on it? If, OK, now if you could stand on it. OK. And with your eyes open. OK. And now we're going to do is a five second test. We're okay. measuring the center of pressure, which is a measure of how much you sway and we can see on the screen just, OK, you can, you can relax. OK. And now what I'll do is um, just put that on the screen. And we can see, um, you can see a stabilogram on the right, and then FFTs, or fast Fourier transforms, on the left. And it looks like you have about, oh, one and a half centimeters of sway. OK. And now, why, for comparison, let's um, just have you stand again okay. with your eyes closed on one foot. OK. So now. It's counting down. <laughs> this is a lot harder to yes, do. This sure is. It turns out to be very hard to do for, for the elderly, mm -hmm. for instance. OK, you can stop. OK. And now we'll analyze this and compare that with the one and a half centimeters. And now this is more like, looks like four centimeters. Mm -hmm. So you can see how much your yeah, eyes affect yeah, your sway. Yeah. And sway is important because the elderly sway more and they're at mm -hmm, a high risk of mm -hmm. falling. OK. Um, pharmaceuticals, different drugs, and alcohol can affect your sway, and even lead poisoning yeah. in children. So why don't you pick up the golf club? OK. Let's look at um, a little golf here. I'm not a golfer. Everybody's going to see that immediately. OK. Now you on? Can, yep. And okay. take a swing when you're ready. Anytime? Sure. Here we go. OK. Now we can see uh, a line on the screen. And let's just um, analyze this and look at, look at how your center of pressure traveled. And there we can see, it's a little hard to see, in the upper right-hand side, we can see the center of pressure went forward as you went forward on your feet and then back as you relaxed. And, and a pro golfer could use this kind of information to figure out how to oh, do this all better, I assume. Definitely. Golf club companies are interested in okay. using this now. Gentlemen, thank you very much. That's our look at computers and sports. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news. In the random access file this week, Logitech has a new breed of mouse, a unit designed to work in both 2D applications and 3D computer-aided design. Logitech says that in 3D work, the device can be physically lifted off the tabletop and can pick up and send ultrasonic waves to a control unit. And the mouse also has a tiny microphone, which can transmit spoken commands to the computer. Speaking of 3D, Matsushita Electric has developed a 3D computer graphic system which can process a person's face and change it to fit a variety of situations. As an example, the faces of mother and father can be combined to create the look of their baby. Or the face of a baby can be aged to show how he would look at 70 years old. The system is expected to be used by law enforcement agencies to replace traditional artist sketches of suspects. Matsushita is still developing the technology, but the company says it could literally bring a new face to computing. Taking a look at this week's top 10 software titles for the PC, PC Connection reports that DOS 5.0 upgrade is in the number one position, with PC Tools 7.0 in second. Third is the Norton Utilities, followed by Windows 3.0 and After Dark 1.0 for Windows.
Rounding out the top 10 PC titles are Expanded Memory Manager 386, WordPerfect 5.1, Quicken, Office for Windows, and Adobe Type Manager 1.1 for Windows. Time now for this week's software review with Paul Schindler. Information about the world can come in many forms. Most of them bulky, for the world is a large place. You can learn about it from a globe, from an atlas, or from a new CD-ROM package called World Atlas. You need the storage capacity of a CD-ROM to hold all the information this package does. It allows you to cruise around to your heart's content. It is fast, but be forewarned it takes all of 640K and you may have to strip everything else out. Now, let's go to the Caribbean, which is always a good idea. Focus in on the U.S. Virgin Islands. Examine a political map with place names. Look up detailed information about communications. Going back to the world view, you can look at a topographic map as well as statistical maps covering such things as temperature, precipitation, fertility, electricity, and population density. It's surprising how fast the screens can be changed, especially if you want to go back and forth between two maps. You can also print copies of these maps. World Atlas is $60 from Software Toolworks in Chatsworth, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. And finally, the economic news from most of the computer industry is pretty glum, but there was a surprising ray of light this week. Next Computers, the company founded by Steve Jobs, the same man who founded Apple Computer, announced that its second quarter revenues reached $46 million, an 86% increase over last year. 70% of Next Workstation sales were to business and government. That's it for this week's random access file compiled from the wires of the NewsBytes News Network. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Kate McGargy. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by Central Point Software, makers of PC Tools 7.0, a comprehensive group of integrated utilities including hard disk backup, remote computing, and data protection, as well as three Windows programs and extended Novell Netware support. Additional funding has been provided by the Software Publishers Association, which reminds you it's a federal offense to copy software, and by PC Connection and Mac Connection, and by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. The Computer Chronicles provides a free kit to help you review the contents of your company's hard disks and ensure the ethical use of software. For a free self-audit program, write to The Computer Chronicles, Box 2954, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17105.